9.6 Lesson 2, The Root Test. Objectives 1. You'll be able to apply the root test to determine the convergence or divergence of a given series. 2. You will know when the root test is inconclusive. And the root test is the last of the tests that we're learning for the convergence and divergence of a series. So Objective 3. Having learned different tests for convergence or divergence of a series, you will be able to use the appropriate test for convergence or divergence to determine the convergence and divergence of a given series. So the test that we've learned, uh, we go back to the telescoping series test, geometric series test, the nth term test for divergence, the integral test, the p-series test, the direct comparison test, the limit comparison test, the alternating series test, and then we looked at theorem 9.16, which states something about the convergence of a signed series if we know that the corresponding absolute value series converges. And then we looked at the ratio test and today the root test. So those are all the tests that we've learned so far. So after looking at the root test, you will have learned all of the different tests that we're learning for convergence or divergence of series. And your work will be to determine which one to use for a particular problem. And that's objective three. So here we have the root test, and you can see that it doesn't really require anything for you to be able to apply it. You can use it on any series. However, it may not work out so well for a number of the series that you might be working with because you do have to find this limit. And it's not always easy to find this limit for a particular series. And if you can't find this limit, well, the test is no good. So, so although there is no particular requirement for the test to be applicable, because you can use it on any series, there are no conditions about what the nth term has to be, etc., you do have to find this limit. So if you can't find this limit, the root test is not the way to go. So which types of series have nth terms for which it's easy to find the limit that we have to find for the root test? When you take a look at the limit that you have to take, you have to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term of the series. So this particular test works especially well for problems like the ones that I'll write now. The two series for numbers 40 and 44 have one thing in common. They have nth terms that are raised to an nth power, in this case to the negative n power. Those types of series work well with the root test because what are you doing when you take the limit for the root test? When you take the limit for the root test, you're taking the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term. So if your nth term has an nth power and you're taking the nth root, the nth power from the nth term would be undone by taking the nth root, thus giving you an easy limit to evaluate. So the root test works particularly well for series involving nth powers because when you take the limit for the root test, you'll be taking the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term. So we learned about the ratio test before, and like the ratio test, you're always taking the same limit, but depending on what the limit is equal to, you will reach different conclusions. Or in the third case, no conclusion can be drawn if the limit for the root test is equal to 1. If the limit for the root test is equal to 1, your series could converge or it could diverge. You cannot tell with the root test. You have to do something else. But if the limit is less than 1, the root test, the root test tells you that the series converges absolutely. If the limit is greater than 1 or infinity, the root test tells you that the series diverges. So here we have number 40, use the root test to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. And again, the root test works well for this type of series where you have an nth power in the nth term. 
So what happens when we set up the limit? So this is the limit that we need to evaluate for the root test. The limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term. And of course, the nth term for number 40 is right here. So we have the absolute value of that. The first thing that you should note is whether the absolute value can be removed. If you have terms for a series that are only positive, you don't need absolute value because you already have terms that are positive. And you can see that for all n for our series, the terms will be positive. And in fact, even if that were not the case, you really need to just think about what happens as n gets large because we're taking the limit as n is going to infinity. So because the terms of the series will be positive, the absolute value sign is redundant. We can get rid of it. So now we just have this, and this allows for simplification. And that, this is why we say the root test works especially well for series whose nth terms involve nth powers, because now you have a quantity that's raised to the nth power and then you're taking the nth root. So those are inverse operations, they'll undo each other and look at what happens when we simplify. You can of course write the nth root as raising to the 1 over n power and here you have the power of a power so you can multiply the exponents and when you multiply n times 1 over n you get n over n which is 1. So that simplifies to just the limit as n approaches infinity of 4n plus 3 over 2n minus 1. And what is this limit equal to? Uh, if you look at the quantity or the expression that we're taking the limit of as n goes to infinity, it is a rational expression where the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. So the limit of this rational expression as n goes to infinity can be found by looking at the quotient of the leading coefficients. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. And what is 2? 2 is greater than 1. So we have the limit from the root test giving us a value that's greater than 1. So we may conclude by the root test that this series diverges. Now we take a look at our second example. Use the root test to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. And again, make the observation that the nth term has an nth power. So it's a suitable series to apply the root test because it'll be easy for you to evaluate the limit for the root test because you'll be taking the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term. So that will have a simplification effect because you have negative n uh, in the, for our exponent here. Before I demonstrate the root test with number 44, I would like to point out that what we have here is a geometric series whose common ratio 1 over e is uh, less than 1. So this is a geometric series and we know it converges because the absolute value of its common ratio is between 0 and 1. And this is a more efficient way of doing the problem. And in fact, because it's a geometric series, you can find the sum of this convergent geometric series by using the formula a over 1 minus r. However, uh, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the use of the root test with this problem. After setting up the limit that we need to take for the root test, you have to consider whether the absolute value sign is necessary. So as for any n, e to the negative n will be positive because the range of the exponential function e to the x 
are y values that are greater than 0. So for any n, e to the negative n will be positive. So it is not necessary for us to have the absolute value because we already have positive terms. So now we can go ahead and simplify by removing the absolute value as I've just done. And then you can write the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the negative n. The nth root can be written as raising to the 1 over n power. You can write the nth root of a quantity as that quantity raised to the 1 over n power. So that's what I'm doing here. And then here you have the power of a power, so you can multiply the exponents. And when you multiply the exponents, you get e to the negative n over n, which is, of course, negative 1. So you have the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the negative 1. Now, e to the negative 1 is a constant. So there is no n there. So this limit is equal to e to the negative 1, which, of course, can be written as 1 over e. e is about 2.7. So 1 over e is less than 1. So by the root test, we know that our series here converges absolutely consistent with our application of the geometric series test earlier, which told us that our geometric series converges. So now we have the application of the root test, and we may conclude that the root test, uh, by the root test, that this series converges absolutely. In our first example, the limit from the root test was equal to 2, and we, conclude that we concluded that our series must diverge by the root test. In this example, the limit from the root test is 1 over e, which is less than 1, so we conclude by the root test that our series must converge absolutely. If you have a problem, and you get that the limit from the root test is equal to 1, you can reach no conclusion using the root test. The root test is inconclusive in that case because the series could be convergent or divergent and the root test will not tell us. Having learned all of the tests for convergence and divergence of a series, we're now ready to consider objective 3. Having learned different tests for convergence or divergence of a series, you will be able to use the appropriate test for convergence or divergence to determine the convergence or divergence of a given series. As we saw with the last example, there were different tests you could have done to determine the convergence or divergence of that particular series. Which one should you do? Uh, do the one that is efficient, that is easy for you to apply, and that will give you the information that you need. For example, for the last example that we just did, if you had used the geometric series test, you could have also found what the series converged to. Uh, with the root test, we found that the series converges absolutely. So you'll see this on page 644 of your textbook. We have a summary of all of the tests that we've learned. And we have conditions for convergence and conditions for divergence. So the nth term test, if the limit of the nth term as n goes to infinity is not equal to 0, then the series diverges by the nth term test for divergence. As a note, we cannot use the nth term test to conclude that a series converges. Geometric series, whether the geometric series converges or not depends on the absolute value of the common ratio. If it does converge, you can find the sum of the convergent geometric series. Telescoping series, you look at the limit of the nth partial sum as n goes to infinity. Uh, P-series, there is a very easy way for us to determine if a P-series converges or not. You look at the value of P. Alternating series, you check for these two conditions. If both are satisfied, then the alternating series converges. There is something called the alternating series remainder theorem. So you can use that to determine if you wanted to know approximately 
what your alternating series converges to for a convergent alternating series. You can use the alternating series remainder theorem to determine the, uh, how close your approximation is to the actual infinite sum. If you're using an nth partial sum to approximate an infinite sum, the alternating series remainder theorem will tell you how close your nth partial sum approximation is to the infinite sum. So that's a note that we have about the alternating series test. Uh, you've got the integral test. You can apply it if your corresponding real valued function is continuous, positive, and decreasing. You check for the convergence or divergence of the corresponding improper integral to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. We learned about the root test today. You look at this limit and depending on the value of the limit, you will determine if the series converges or not. It is inconclusive if the limit is equal to 1. Yesterday we learned about the ratio test. This is the limit that you're evaluating for the ratio test and depending on the value of the limit you can reach a conclusion about the convergence or divergence of the series. Again, if the limit is equal to 1, the ratio test is inconclusive and you'd have to do some other test. We also learned about the direct comparison and the limit comparison tests. The important thing to note is that these tests are applicable for series with positive terms and of course they are conditions that you have to satisfy to correctly apply each test. We also learned about two variations of the limit comparison test that you can go back to and review. In addition to what's listed in this table, we also learned about theorem 9.16 which tells us that if the corresponding absolute value series converges, then the original sign series must also converge, and we call that absolutely convergent. On the other hand, if the corresponding absolute value series diverges, but the original sign series converges, we say the sign series is conditionally convergent. Page 643 of your textbook has these guidelines for testing a series for convergence or divergence. And these are guidelines. Uh, you will develop an intuition for what works best as you do more and more problems. But if you're thinking about how best to proceed, you can try these suggestions as a start. So does the nth term approach zero? If not, the series diverges by the nth term test for divergence. Is the series a special type of series? Is it a geometric series? Is it a p-series? Is it a telescoping series or an alternating series? We know that there is a simple test for the convergence or divergence of geometric and p-series. For telescoping series, you can write a formula for the nth partial sum and take the limit of the nth partial sum as n goes to infinity. There is a test to determine the convergence or divergence of alternating series. Maybe it's not one of those special types, so you may have to consider something like the integral test, or the root test, or the ratio test. Or you may have to do a comparison to a type of series whose convergence or divergence you can determine easily, such as a geometric series or a p-series. If so, you may be able to apply either the direct comparison test or the limit comparison test provided that you have series with positive terms and the appropriate conditions for the correct application of each test are satisfied. As a part of your assigned homework for tonight you'll be looking at example 5 from page 643 of your textbook uh, for applications of the different tests that we've learned to find the convergence or divergence of the various series in example 5. So today we looked at the root test and we looked at all we we did a review of the different tests that we've learned for convergence or divergence of series and you'd like to try to determine which test is most appropriate for a particular given series. So this concludes our study of the different tests for convergence and divergence of series. And our next lesson, we'll take a look at something called a power series, and then we'll move on to approximating functions with power series.